Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the live section of YouTube.com. And this is where individuals are live streaming their content direct to YouTube. And while in many cases what's being streamed is going to be news, gaming, sports, and events, other individuals are using this medium in order to stream their content live to followers, clients, and customers. So in this course, we will go inside of the Creator Studio and we'll look at how you can use this medium to stream your content. Now, while there are a number of options available, we will focus on the minimum number of pieces that you'll need in order to get started. We'll also look at a third party application that you can use in order to make things easier. So with that, thanks and I'll see you in the first video. Now there is a minimum level of equipment necessary if you're going to live stream on YouTube. And you'll want to be able to create audio into YouTube Live without noise. And so typically what you'll want to do is to get some kind of noise canceling headset. You're looking at one with stereo jacks which would fit into a personal computer with both headphones and a mic jack. Now it's possible that you will only have a USB drive and if that's the case what you can do is you can use a USB headset or mic. If your personal computer has nothing but a USB drive but you also have a headset with stereo jacks you can use an adapter where the stereo jacks will fit into the adapter and then the adapter will plug into your USB. Now if for some reason you're going to be looking to record yourself then you are going to need some kind of webcam if you don't have a webcam inside of your personal computer. Now you're looking right now at the Logitech C930E and the reason that this can work extremely well in your setup when you are streaming live is because the resources to run the camera are actually within the camera. They don't run on your personal computer and that will keep you from some latency issues. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to discuss some things that will make live streaming easier and they would fall into category of things that are nice to have it wouldn't be mandatory. First, you're looking at a full HD monitor that fits into your VGA port. You can do this as a single monitor or you can get two. Both will help you to be able to manage everything that you're doing in terms of your presentation while you're live streaming. If you need to live stream and you want to use something that's going to be portable, there are HD monitors available that will fit into your USB port that you can use as a portable system with your laptop. In some cases when you are trying to use your VGA system and you want to plug it into your personal computer, in recent years laptops no longer have the VGA port so you're going to need some kind of adapter that will allow you to take your VGA and plug it into your USB port. Now if you have those basics it's going to be a lot easier to live stream from your desktop. Now, in the next video we're going to talk about a few things that will make it easy for you to live stream with your mobile device. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, there are a few items that if you're going to be live streaming primarily with your mobile that are going to be helpful to you. Now, you're looking right now at a selfie stick and tripod stand. The reason that this is important is because you want to make sure that you have the kind of hardware that will allow you to attach your mobile device to your conventional tripod, mainly because you may be in situations where you need a full-size tripod. And so you'll want to have that tripod holder to fit onto it. And so if you have the tripod holder, you'll be able to use it on a full-size tripod. And this will give you some versatility in terms of where you want your camera to rest while you're recording. You'll also want to make sure that you have some kind of connection to the Ethernet where you can be hardwired. Typically this is going to take some kind of adapter and you'll want to make sure that you get one that will fit your particular mobile device. Lastly, there are going to be some cases where you will need an external microphone. You're looking at one right now where two people can wear a microphone at the same time. So if you need to record an interview that you're doing, one person can wear one lavalier mic, you can wear the other one, and you can actually conduct an interview from your mobile device, and you can live stream it. So this equipment and hardware won't be mandatory for you to have in order to live stream However, it will make your live stream a lot easier and it will allow you to produce a higher quality video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. 
Welcome back. Now, if you don't have a Google account or YouTube account, you're going to start the process by going to youtube.com. You're going to go to this sign in button. When you get to this screen, if you don't have an account, you're going to click this button that says create account. Now, if you don't have a Google account, again, you're going to create a Google account before you start YouTube. And then once you do that, you're then going to be able to sign in to YouTube. But once you're logged in, you're going to want to come to your profile picture. You're then going to want to click on the settings button. That's going to bring you to this page. And what you can do is you can then decide on a particular brand that you're going to want to operate under. And what you're going to do is you're going to come down to this area and you're going to create a new channel from this link. What you're going to do is you're going to click this button that says create a new channel. You're then going to give your brand a name. Once you do that, you're then going to click create. You'll then be at a point where you can begin to customize the look and feel of your channel. What you're going to want to do is to come back to your profile now. You're then going to want to click your creator studio. Now in order to do most of the features, you're going to need to upload a video. So even if you're not going to use that video, you're probably going to want to upload a video that you have and then turn it to private just so you can begin to customize your channel. So what you're going to do here is you're going to click upload a video. You're then going to click this button. You're going to turn the privacy to private. You're then going to click this button and then you're going to upload a video. Once you do that, you're then going to click done and then YouTube will complete the process of uploading your video. You'll then be ready to start the customization process. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Once you have uploaded your video, what you're going to do is you're going to come back to your profile. You're then going to go back to your Creator Studio. And then once you've gone back to your Creator Studio, you're then going to go to this channel area. That's going to open up a new dialog box on the left-hand side, and you're going to see that you're going to be in the Status and Features area. Now, once you've uploaded your video, you should be eligible to upload videos. What you want to do then is you want to then click this button to enable live streaming. So you're going to click this button. What's going to happen then is that Google is going to verify your identity through your mobile device. Now you can in some cases have multiple accounts. So just so that you'll be aware, you should be able to go through this account verification process if you have another account associated with your mobile device. What you're also going to want to enable are going to be longer videos. Since your streams will likely be longer than 15 minutes, you want to click this enable button. And again, if you haven't gone through the verification process, Google will take you through that verification process at this point. But there are other features that you are going to want to enable. Custom thumbnails, external annotations, and custom URLs. That may take time and a few videos for you to have uploaded. However, as soon as these are going to be eligible to you, you want to make sure that these are going to be enabled because they will help you in promoting your live stream. But once you've enabled everything necessary for live streaming, your area should look something like this. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, YouTube has default settings that you can use so that you can have your video categorized and optimized without having to enter the same data over and over again. And so what you're going to want to do is to go over to these upload defaults. That's going to bring you to this page. Now, if your videos and your live streams are typically going to be ready for public consumption as soon as you record them, you're going to want to leave this default at public. What you can do is you can leave it at unlisted and then come back and change it once the video has been optimized. If you have a typical category that your videos are going to be in, you can select that category. Typically, you're going to use the standard YouTube license. There are other options available to you. Now, again, you want to stick with these default settings unless there's a reason not to. And if your video is going to have a common title, for example, if you're doing a vlog and typically you're going to have an episode of a particular show, you can write that title in. If you're going to write in a standard description or you're always going to have a URL at the beginning of your description, you can write part of that description so that every time your video uploads, this minimum setting is going to come up. 
you can write in a standard set of tags. And then YouTube is going to leave some default settings checked for you. And you can either leave these checked or you can uncheck them if you don't want that as part of your default. If you want to certify through your captions, you can do that at this area. And if you're going to allow video improvement suggestions, you can, you can enable that here. Once you save these defaults, every time you go live, this minimal information is going to come up as well as the fact that these are going to be the settings that you're going to be working with unless you change them. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, you're also going to want to customize your branding. So we're going to click this link in your left side menu under the channel category. Once we do that, we're going to come to this page. Now, what YouTube will allow you to do is to add a watermark to any of your videos. Typically, you can add in a logo that will be translucent. So what you want to do is click add a watermark. And YouTube suggests that you add a transparency in just one color. The recommended file format is going to be PNG or GIF. So we're going to do is we're going to choose a file and then we're going to upload it to this area. Once you have your photo in, you're then going to click save. And then your watermark will then be uploaded. If you want to upload a different file, you can click this link. Otherwise, you're going to click save. You can choose in the video when you want the brand to appear. You can choose a custom start time. You can choose the end of the video or you can make it appear for the entire video. Once you select it, you can then click update. Now all of your videos and your live stream recordings will have your logo on them. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now before you go into the next stage, you're going to want to make sure that you phone verified your account. You're also going to want to make sure that you are enabled for external annotations. Now those things are in place, you can then go to the advanced link. What you're now going to do is to have your account verified with a particular website. This is going to be the website that you're going to be able to use in order to create external links. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a website that is not going to be associated with any other YouTube account. And then you're going to click add. Once you have that site in, you're then going to click add. You're then going to want to go through a verification process. You're then going to click verify. Now the recommended verification is for you to upload a file to your site and then to allow Google to verify your site based on that file upload. So what you're first going to do is you're going to download the HTML file. You're then going to want to upload your Google downloaded file to your root directory. You want to test and make sure that your file is uploaded by clicking this link. You should then see your file on the web. You'll then click the verify button and then your site will be verified. Once you come back to this page, your site should then be verified and ready to be used with your YouTube account. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, we looked at the upload defaults. There were three settings that we need to discuss a little further, especially as you get ready to start going live on your channel. So to do that, we're going to go to this area. And before we go to the live area, we're going to click upload video. Now there are three choices that you can make when you're going to upload. You can go public, you can go unlisted, you can go private, you can go schedule. Now obviously when you're going live, you're not necessarily going to go schedule. Now when you make your video public, that means then that people are going to be able to watch you live. They're going to be able to watch your recording on demand as soon as it's completed processing. So again, so if you want people to see your video, you want the widest possible distribution, you're going to want to make this public so they'll be able to get it immediately, including your subscribers. Now the next level is going to be unlisted. Now unlisted videos means that it won't be available to be found in search or in YouTube search, but it will be able to be found by those who have the link. That means then that if you want to have it available to select people, who then will have the ability to share the video and watch the video, then you can make it unlisted. Now your subscribers will get notice of your unlisted videos. So you want to be aware of that. So again, so if you want something that's going to be private, 
then you don't want to use unlisted. However, if you want to make it available to people immediately, but not everyone and not for everyone to be able to find and search, you're going to use the unlisted level. Typically, if you're going to want to have video specifically for your subscribers, you're going to want to use unlisted. Now, private video means that only those to whom you designate the video should go to will actually get it. For example, you'll notice that this video says private, but it also has a share button. So if we click this share button, then we'll have to enter the email addresses of the individuals that will have access to this video. And typically you want to make sure that these are going to be Gmail addresses. So this is a truly private video and that only those you designate will be able to see your content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, the easiest way to stream live will be to use your desktop camera, and all you'll need to do is make sure that your camera is connected to your personal computer and that your audio is on, and then what you're going to do is you're going to click this link, it's going to bring you this dialog box. You're then going to click go live. Once you click go live, you're going to get another dialog. Now your browser will then ask you if you're going to allow YouTube to take over your camera and your microphone. In this case, you're going to click allow. And once you get to the screen, you're then going to want to write in your title. You're then going to decide on whether or not your video is going to be unlisted or it's going to be private. Now for the sake of this video, we're going to make this video private. We can click the schedule for later button. And when we click that schedule for later button, we're going to be able to set the time for which we want to go live. You'll notice that there is a more options link. And basically you're going to be able to write in the rest of your description. You'll be able to choose your category and you'll be able to choose your webcam and microphone. Once we do that, we can click this link that says advanced settings. We can decide to allow or disallow the chat for our live stream. It's going to be enabled by default. You can also enable some kind of age restriction. And if you have some kind of sponsored or paid promotion, you can indicate that here. Once you've completed these advanced settings, you can click this arrow. And then you can come back to the screen and then you can then click next. Now in going from the previous screen to this one, YouTube is going to create a thumbnail based on what it sees in your camera. Now, if you want to change that thumbnail, all you'll need to do is click this button that says upload custom thumbnail, or you can click this link that says retake thumbnail and you can have your image taken by your webcam. In this case, we're going to click Upload Custom Thumbnail. And once we've done that, we can click the Go Live button if we want to go live right now, or we can click the Done button, and that'll make sure that we complete the process. Now at the point at which we decide that we want to do the broadcast in the future, we would come back at the appointed time, we would come inside of our Go Live screen, and we would come to this upcoming area and click this link that would bring us to this screen. We would then click our live dashboard and that'll bring us back to this area where we can go live. One other thing you're going to notice is that on the right hand side you have your chat area. So for the individuals that are watching your live stream, they'll be able to chat with you. You'll be able to write in this area where all messages are going to be visible or you can have your messages sorted where it's determined that individuals that are spamming your message area will not be in here. And that is your easiest way of going live straight from your desktop. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, another way to go live will be that you can go to this profile area. You're then going to click your Creator Studio. Once you've selected your Creator Studio, you're then going to want to go to your live streaming link. Once you click the live streaming link, then you're going to want to click this area that says events. So you're going to notice the live event that we created here before. We're going to create the live event from here because it allows us to do something a little different than just going live from our desktop. What we're going to do is we're going to click this area that says new live event. 
We're then going to write in our title. We're then going to decide on when we want to go live with our broadcast. We're then going to write in our description and tags. We're going to decide on whether or not we're going to use the unlisted area or private or public. Now in this case, we're going to go ahead and do a private broadcast for the sake of this video only. And you'll notice here that we have a choice. We can decide that we want to use Google Hangouts on air, or we can use our camera. Now when we use our camera, it's going to be just like the experience that we had using our desktop. However, in this case, when we use Google Hangouts, we are going to then be able to share our screen. So we're now going to click Create Event. And then our future event is going to be on this page. And in order to come and start the live broadcast, we'll need to come into our Creator Studio. We'll need to come into our live streaming link. We'll need to come to this Events tab. And then we'll need to click Start Hangout on Air. Now before we end this video, we're going to go back and click this Edit button. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the advanced settings. So we're going to click this link. And what you're going to notice is that you have some other options. You can decide to enable or disable the live chat. We can decide whether or not we're going to allow this video to be embedded. Now in most cases, if you want to embed your live stream on your website, you're going to keep this allowed. This does allow other people to do the same thing. However, if you want wide distribution of your live stream, you may want to keep this enabled. Now YouTube will do a couple of automated promotions. They will promote this event that you're doing across all of your channels. They'll also promote this event on your channel page when the event is live. So you can enable or disable those functions. But once again, you'll be able to enable or disable your age restriction. And then you can also auto start the event as soon as you are inside of the facility. And we're going to stop the video right here. And we're going to go over the right side settings, the control room and the cards in the next video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back. We are still in the info and settings area in the advanced settings. And many of these settings are going to be the same as you're going to see when we're in post production. However, there are some that are going to be peculiar to the live streaming process. For example, we can decide that regardless of whether the stream was public, we can decide that we're not going to allow it to be found in search by clicking this link. So we'll be making it unlisted as soon as it is completed. We can also choose whether or not the recording will have comments with it. So we are going to have comments during the broadcast. However, we can make it so that the comments will not be allowed after the broadcast. So we can leave this unchecked in order to have that. And that is the default setting. Now, the other thing is we can allow people to go backward and watch some of the beginning of the live broadcast while we're still streaming. Or we can disable this function and they will not be able to back up and see the previous portion of our live stream. Now, one of the things you're going to be able to determine whether or not you want to make sure that most people are going to be able to watch it. You're going to need to make some decisions about whether or not you want normal latency, low latency, or ultra low latency. Again, you're going to do this based on how much interaction you really need to have in real time. Once you have the settings the way you want them, you'll then click Save Changes. Now we can add in cards in order to place links to our video and playlist, our channel, if we're looking for a particular kind of donation to a nonprofit, or we are taking a poll, we can do any of those things with cards. You're now going to want to visit your cards area. When you visit that card area, you can set up a card in various ways. So for example, you can set up a playlist, one of your channel, where you would direct people to your channel by clicking a link, a donation, and a poll. Now you're encouraged to use three of these cards or less for the user experience. You can also click into the live control room and most of this will not be relevant until you actually start your stream, as you can see. 
However, one thing that you'll want to note if you scroll all the way to the bottom is that you'll be able to look at this screen and know what your viewers are seeing and what they're experiencing in the chat. And this will give you control over what their experience is and what it will be. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. What we're now going to do is start the process of a live stream. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our live streaming link. We're going to go to the events tab. And once we get to the events tab, we're going to look for the live stream that we set up. And we're going to click this button that says start hangout on air. Now you're going to get another message that says that Google wants to use your microphone and your camera. Now this is going to be a separate window from your browser, so you are going to need to click allow. Now there are going to be several things on this screen that you're going to want to take note of. Now obviously when you enter this area, you have not yet started the broadcast. So one of the first things you'll want to take note of is going to be your settings button. And this is where you're going to set up your camera. This is where you're going to set up your microphone. And this is where you're going to set up what you are going to be listening to either in your headset or through your personal computer. If you want to make sure that the sound is playing, you'll click this link where you're going to play a test sound. Once you have all of this information in, you are then going to click save. Now, obviously we do not have the camera turned on, but if we did, you'd be seeing a preview of your webcams view in this box. It's here where you will be able to adjust your bandwidth. Now again, if you're trying to broadcast in as high a quality as possible, you're obviously going to want to tilt the scale toward this end. The default setting is going to be at the very end. You can have it so that your camera is going to be turned off altogether. Now currently, even though all you see is a blank screen, the camera is turned on. And the only reason that you can't see the subject is because there is a cover over the camera. If we turn off the camera in this case, you're going to notice that the icon is going to be there. The camera is turned back on, then the view of the camera will come back on and it will be the preview here. If you want to mute the microphone, you're going to be able to do that from this area. Now what you're going to see in this area is going to be an invitation. And when you click this link, you're not going to be inviting people to watch the call you're actually going to be inviting people to participate with you in your live broadcast inside of your Hangout. So you're going to click this button and you're going to get a link. The link that you share here is going to go to people and then they're going to actually be invited on the panel with you to present during your live broadcast. So you can pass the link by clicking here or, or you can send the link specifically to an individual by using their name and email address in this area. Now at this point, we're going to close this invitation. We're going to stop the video here. And when we come back, we're going to work with this left side menu of other controls for your Hangout. Okay, so with that, thanks. And I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to go over the left side panel and customizing it for your live stream. One of the advantages of using Google Hangouts is that you will be able to share your screen. But one of the other things you're going to be able to do is to utilize what's called the group chat. Now this group chat is going to be available with the people that are going to be on the panel with you. So for example, we invited certain people using this link at the top. Those people are going to be presenting with us and as they present, we're going to be able to have an internal dialogue with them as we present. And we're going to use this chat box in order to do it. Now the other thing we're going to be able to do is share our screen. And to start the screen share process, we're going to click this green button. Now when that happens, then Google is going to show us all the screens that we have available for us to share with our audience. So when we get ready to do that, all we'll need to do is to choose the screen that we're going to be interacting with and we're going to click on it and then we're going to click the share button. You'll notice here that you'll have a way of stopping the process by clicking this button and of course you can end the hangout altogether. But basically you want to utilize this area 
so that if you need to stop sharing your screen and to go on to something else, perhaps back to your camera, you can do that. So you can still remain live and yet stop screen sharing. So for example, let's click the stop button. And what you're going to notice then is that Google goes back to the screen share with your camera. Now we also have a cameraman button. Now this cameraman button allows us to control the experience with the individuals that are going to be participating with us on our live stream. So for example, it says when guests join, we can hide their audio and video. Again, all that does is give you a measure of control over the live stream. We can choose only to broadcast the live stream. So the audience will not see the images at the bottom. So if we click this button, yes, we want the audience to only see what's going to be on the screen. And when we want to maintain control, over when they're going to be able to speak, we can make sure that everyone that joins this broadcast with us, and again, those are going to be the individuals that you invite here, they're going to be muted when they join. So this gives you a measure of control. We also have what's called the Hangout Control Room. And Google tells us one of the things we can do is we can turn someone's volume up or down. We can eject someone if they're not behaving properly. So we click OK. And then our Control Room gives us access to each person who's participating with us, their volume, their mic, and we can eject them also. When we've stopped working with the control panel, we can X out of here. Now, because we're going to be live streaming, there's one other application that we're going to want to take note of. You want to hover over these three buttons. You want to click Add Apps. You want to click the Hangout Toolbox. When we do that, we want to install the extension. Once we install the Hangout Toolbox, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to add in a lower third. So for example, all we need to do is to write in our tagline. We can choose our color. Or we can upload our own overlay or our own lower third by using this custom button. Once we have our overlay looking the way we want, all we'll need to do is to turn this on. And when we turn on this button, our lower third will then be available. We also have available to us other settings. However, the only thing that we're really going to be working with with our Hangout Toolbox on our live stream primarily is going to be the lower third. So once we've done our setup, we are then ready to go live with our broadcast. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, once you've decided on what you're going to present, you're then ready to go live. You can click this hide button if you are sharing your screen and then you can click the start broadcast button. Now as soon as you click the start broadcast button you want to be aware that if you've made your live stream public it's going to be public not only to those with whom you've shared the link but also on YouTube in general. So what you're going to do then is you're going to click this start broadcast button. YouTube will then remind you that your broadcast will be on YouTube. You can then click OK. Once you do that, then you'll see that there will be a startup period. And once the startup period is over, you'll see the stop broadcast button. You'll see the red live button. And that means that you are presenting whatever is on your screen live to those on YouTube. Now, if you have a second monitor, what you can do on the other monitor is that you can go to your live control room. If you go to that live control room, you should be able to see your broadcast. And what you're looking at at this point will be what your audience is actually going to see. So, for example, if you click this button, this is what's being broadcast. Now, you're going to want to make sure that you've turned this volume down, but you'll be able to see what the audience is seeing on a delay, but as you present it. And so this can be on your screen and you can be watching the chat here at the same time and you'll be watching what they're reacting to. Now again, once you've chosen to present your content, what you can do is you can switch screens and all you'll need to do is you'll need to click this screen share button that will give you the access to your panel. You'll be able to click the screen button again and then you'll be able to choose the screen that you're going to present. You can cancel that screen and then you'll go back to your camera. As you can see here, this is our camera available to us. We can turn off our camera and then it will be our Google icon. If we want to pass the link to someone while we're actually presenting, all we'll need to do is to click this links button. We can take this YouTube page and then we can share this link 
with other individuals, perhaps on social media or elsewhere. And once you've completed what you're going to present, you can then click this leave call button and that will actually stop the hangout and that will stop the transmission. So what we're going to do first is we're going to stop the broadcast. That means that we're no longer presenting live. And now what we can do is we can click this hangout button that will close the window for Google Hangouts. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the alternatives when you are presenting on your live stream, and especially when you are sharing your screen, is going to be that you're going to be able to use Google Slides. Now, in order to make this easier, you may want to use Google Slides in another browser. So, for example, if you have a second type of browser installed on your personal computer, you can use it, or you may want to use another instance. But basically, you're going to use Google Slides. And what you're going to do is you're going to open up your presentation in Google Slides. And what you're going to do is you're going to present on the main screen from your slides. Now, before you start your presentation, what you're going to open is this bar for the Q&A. That's going to give you access to the audience tools and the speaker notes inside of Google Slides. What you're then going to do is you're going to click Start New. You will then be able to allow your audience to participate with you from this URL. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to copy this URL, you need to give it to those individuals that are going to be part of your audience, and then what you'll be able to do is to make their questions live on the broadcast. Now if you choose to use the Q&A feature of Google Slides, this is the screen that they'll be using instead of the chat inside of YouTube. And for example, if they ask a question, they can write their question in to you. And they'll click Submit. Now what you will have on your second monitor are your audience tools and your speaker notes, and you'll get the question from the individuals on your call. Now what makes this unique is that you'll be able to present that question to everyone as you answer it. So what you would do is you would click this Present button. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move the audience tools to another monitor, which is where you would have it anyway if you were going to be using this feature of Google Slides. And basically you'll see that this would be the screen that we would be presenting and this would be the question that people are asking. So again, this is an alternative to being able to present questions and answers to your audience while you present on your YouTube live screen. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, for the most part, throughout this course, we've not mentioned many third-party applications. This is one that you may want to consider, especially if you are a user of Facebook Live and YouTube Live. The dilemma for some live streamers is that they want to do both at the same time. Restream.io will allow you to stream to both Facebook Live and YouTube at the same time by using their application. Now there is a free trial, but in order to use Facebook Live and YouTube Live at the same time, you will need the paid version. So once you set up Restream, what you're going to do first is you're going to add in your channel. And you'll obviously start with YouTube Events. You'll click Connect YouTube Events. You can also add in your YouTube live stream, and then you are then ready to begin working with your channels. Now, if you want to begin adding in another channel, what you'll need to do is you'll need to add in your Facebook live channel. You'll notice then that you're going to need to have the paid version. Now, in order to do this, you will need to have a custom RTMP, and you can select the plan that you like the most inexpensive one at the recording of this video is going to be $19 per month. But once you have the upgrade, what you'll be able to do is to go back to Restream. You'll then add your channel. You'll then add in Facebook Live. You'll then connect to your Facebook account. You'll then complete the connection. You can then decide on whether or not you're going to allow them to post to your timeline. You can then click OK. You can then choose to allow Restream to manage your pages. 
And typically, since you're going to be working with business pages, you are going to choose this. However, you can choose which you are going to allow. Once you've made your choices, you can then click OK. But once you have your channel set up inside of Restream, you are going to need to have some kind of software in order to do this. Now there's free software available and it's called OBS Studio. You can download OBS Studio in order to broadcast to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time through Restream. And basically what you'll be using are two pieces of information. You'll be using this RTMP stream as well as your stream key and placing it inside of your OBS system so that you can simultaneously broadcast to Restream which will then broadcast to YouTube as well as Facebook at the same time. And all you'll need to do is to download the software for your appropriate system. And when you're setting up OBS, what you'll need to do is you'll need to use your Reamstream.io as your service. They're then going to ask you for your stream key. You're going to get that information from Restream and when you click in here, it's actually going to reveal the real letters and real numbers. So you'll just want to click in there. You won't have to worry about the encryption signals here. And you're going to put that stream key in this area and then you're going to click next. And once your stream is set up inside of OBS, you can then begin streaming live to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you have YouTube installed on your mobile device, whether it's an iPhone or an Android, you can go live on that device also with the YouTube app. And so all you'll need to do is to enter the YouTube app. What you're then going to do is to click the camera, and you'll notice that you have a button there that says Go Live. And of course, you have a button there that allows you to go live. And this is going to broadcast whatever you're going to be showing on your screen. If you want to have the camera front facing, you can do that or you can have it rear facing. All you'll need to do then is click the button that says go live and you will be live then on your channel. And once we've written in our title, we can then click done and we can then click next. And then we'll then be going live on our channel as soon as we hit the blue button. You can rotate your stream to go in landscape or you can choose to stream in portrait. Once you do that, you'll then be going live. When the broadcast is over, you can then hit the X button. And then you can click the end button. And your live video will then be complete on your mobile device. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, we have walked through all of the basics for streaming live on YouTube. We've looked at creating live streams from the event page, and we've looked at the various ways to make your video available, public, unlisted, and private. We looked at the setup for Google Hangouts so that you would be able to share your screen. And we looked at one of the easiest ways of going live, which is direct from your desktop. And we also walked through the process of going live using your mobile device. Now, given this, you should now have no problem going to your YouTube profile, going inside your creator studio, and determining a way that you want to do live streaming. Knowing that you can do live streaming either as an event or direct with your webcam. And all of this means that you can create all kinds of content, including using slide presentations. So we showed you how to use Google Slides in order to have a different kind of interaction with your audience during your live stream. And finally, we looked at the paid application, Restream.io, which allows you to stream to YouTube Live and Facebook Live simultaneously. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.